I said earlier, Lince Dorado is one of the names on the cut list. You guys have heard of Izzy. Many of you, I'm sure, know who Izzy is. She was the little Bailey super fan from NXT who's uh, not so little anymore. She was always at those Full Sail University shows with her parents in the first few rows. Her father, Cody, was in the news recently. He was accused of being the one behind all the booing directed at MSK in recent months. All because one half of MSK, Nash Carter, had the audacity to criticize Izzy taking a chokeslam bump in a match against Effie at an independent show when she was only 12 years old. That would have been three years ago. She took a choke slam. Chelsea Green was another wrestler who was very vocal at the time about it and, and blamed her parents and the promoter of the show for it. And she has since tweeted about Izzy's father bullying her as well when she was in NXT. And guess who else spoke out at the time about Izzy doing that spot? Lince Dorado, who said, As a parent and a pro wrestler, I feel embarrassed due to the actions of my peers. Not okay. To all of my friends who support the decision of a 12-year-old getting chokeslammed at a professional wrestling ring, that is your opinion. However, I do not agree and find that very disturbing. Fast forward to this week, Lince gets released. And there's Izzy's dad tweeting Lince to wish him good luck in his future endeavors with a smiley emoji at the end of it. You know this guy has been keeping like a, like a hit list on these people for three years now. That's what's so pathetic about all this. Well, Lince responded to Mr. Izzy and said, Don't worry, fam. I see you. At Cody Starbuck, which, is, which was, I should say, his handle on there. I will be at Silver Spurs Arena today at 4 after my competition. Come down and talk. We gonna talk or what? The competition that he was referring to was a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament that Dorado was competing in. A competition that he won, and he got the gold in. So, obviously Mr. Izzy was quick to issue it. Now, this is before I think he actually won the thing, but it wasn't long after he tweeted that, that Mr. Izzy was quick to issue an apology on social media. And he said, Lince, no need to talk because I have truly already said too much. I am man enough to admit when I'm wrong. I sincerely apologize for my insensitive tweet on Thursday. Deleting the tweet is not enough. I owe you a direct apology. I also recognize and respect what you are dealing with professionally in this moment. I should have never made such a rude, off-the-cuff remark. Again, I truly apologize for my actions. You are a talented wrestler. I know that you will continue to thrive in the pro wrestling business. I want you to know that with sincerity. I do wish you and your family all the best. Hashtag apology. He actually included hashtag apology at the end of that, which made me laugh. Well, I guess Lince didn't accept his apology. Instead, posting pictures of a parking pass that he bought and a ticket to the show that he paid for. He paid for this himself. He paid for a ticket to the event and a parking pass and invited Mr. Izzy to come on down so that they could chat about things. And he later tweeted that the guy no-showed. So not only did Izzy's dad not accept Lindsay's invite, he deleted his entire Twitter account. I guess he also deactivated his Twitter after the MSK fiasco, but maybe this time he'll stay deactivated. But I love that Lindsay invited this guy, who he clearly wanted to smack around, to a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament where he kicked someone else's ass and won the gold. I can't say that I blame him for not showing up. Maybe he should have sent Izzy to take his place. Poor guy now has to live his life watching out for a wrestler who wears a lucha mask and whose face he's probably never seen before. <laughs> Lindsay's got himself more over on Twitter in the last 24 hours than he did in five years working for Vince McMahon. And Lindsay Dorado was not the only lucha house party member to wind up in the middle of a Twitter controversy this week. There was a situation involving Kalisto, involving Samurai Del Sol, where he wrote on Twitter, prayed and talked to John, and then in parenthesis he put Brody Lee, before my match. Thank you for showing me your home at AEW and giving me the strength and energy I need. Uh, I need it today. And then he put a praying emoji 
Forever you are in my heart, Hermano. Jericho, later on, quote tweeted that and mentioned that you spelled his name wrong because he spelled John J-O-H-N instead of J-O-N. That's how John Huber spelled his name. So Jer it, it sounded very petty when I first saw that tweet. I said, this is very odd. Why would Jericho be doing this? Obviously, it looked like this guy's heart was in the right place. And to call him out publicly like that for a spelling error seemed very uh, bizarre. As if that wasn't bizarre enough, John's widow, Amanda, who is on Twitter now, concurred with Jericho. And people were saying to her, well, what's the big deal? He didn't mean anything, you know, negative by it. And then she was she was replying to people on Twitter, you know, that it's reasonable to expect that somebody would spell the man's name right if you name drop them. And, you know, somebody brought up Miro in the past has also misspelled his name. He wrote Brody, B-R-O-D-Y instead of B-R-O-D-I-E. And she responded to that. And said, first of all, Brody was a stage name, not his real name. And Miro spoke to me almost daily when John was sick. Miro cried with me after he passed. Miro continuously checked in on me and my kids. And what it seems like is that she was upset because she didn't really think that this guy was all that close to her husband. She wasn't like a really, like really good friend of his. And was just name dropping him and she had never heard a word from him the entire time that he was sick and then passed away. She didn't hear a single word from Callisto. So that's really what it sounds like this might be about. They were they were upset that he was sort of, I guess, I guess clout chasing in a way and using his name in a personal way that, you know, he either wasn't close to him or just said nothing to her and the family when all that stuff went down last year. Now, if they know something we don't know, then fair enough. I'm not going to criticize his widow for how she feels, but I don't know that this needed to be aired out on social media. I mean, it just looks like Jericho tweeted about the spelling stuff as a way to kind of stick up for her. Not because they necessarily really gave a shit about the way he spelled his name in a tweet. It's just a really lousy juvenile situation that probably should have been addressed with the guy directly because if it really wasn't just about how he spelled the guy's name... All it did was get people attacking Amanda for being overly insensitive. I saw so many tweets and comments directed at her and tagging her, bashing her. And, you know, there's no reason for her to have to take that kind of abuse either. Not, not just Kalisto. So I just think the, the entire thing is just one giant said tweet.